time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're at the press conference here for Haymaker Ringstar Show this Saturday night, live on Channel 5. I'm joined by a promoter today. Yeah. Just today. Just today. Yeah. I'm promoter hat comes off tomorrow, then comes back on. Away in, then no, actually it's on for the next three days in actual fact. Then it's off. And then it kind of comes back on occasionally when we've got some, uh, some PR to do, some press to do. It's funny seeing you in between the fighters in their head-to-heads because yeah. we've seen you in them situations know, and everyone's kind of maybe waiting for you to do something. <laughs> Kick off, so you're thinking involved. the same. No, I, it's really strange because when I see these guys going at it, I'm thinking, is one of them going to? Because I've, I've kind of reacted occasionally in those face-to-face -face, um, and I'm like I'm trying to judge it whether to get in. Once I feel it bubbling up, I'm like, all right, what I don't want is one of them to whack one, punch a teeth out or cut someone and the fight's off. Yeah, because so, you uh, don't have a yeah, As a fan, sometimes you want it. As a fan, you want to, but when you're the promoter, you need these fights to turn up and fight. So don't, they don't turn up and fight, the message to show up. So I, I want them, I'm looking at things in a, in a different way now. I was going to say, you've never swung a, a punch at a head-to-head -head before, have you? No, not me. I'd never do that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the card. Obviously, um, let's talk about Joe Joyce first of all. His third fight uh, going in against uh, six foot ten. Donnie big Palmer, nasty, big nasty. who I actually met a couple of years ago, he's in camp with yeah. Vladimir Klitschko, yeah. head of his Tyson Fury fight. Um, in your opinion, is Donnie Palmer a step up for me in Lewison? I know he's. I think, I think yeah. so. I think so. His, his record suggests that. You know, the fact that he's so big, so heavy, poses poses problems in himself. I, I feel that you know he's the guy who wants to fight. You know, you know when you're making these calls about fighting Joe Joyce, you hear no, 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 no. And then when someone's contacting you. So, okay, this is this is strange. This is different. And okay, yeah, cool. You want to fight? Great. This is the money. He said, amazing. Let's let's make it happen. He's over here nice and early, training with Dylan White. So you know, he's the powers. They said he's been in training camp before with Dylan White and with Klitschko and all these all these big names over the years. So he's well he's well seasoned in the ring. So you know, uh, the, the size of Joe Joyce isn't going to pose any issues for him mentally. You know, he's, as I said, he's been there with you know, Vladimir Klitschko. So. He's, he, in his mind, he's got nothing to fear from a guy who's had two fights. Well, one thing for sure, he seems bang up for it. Yeah, he is. He is up for it. I said he contacted me. Yeah. You know, I don't know what. You know, as far as I'm aware, he's in good shape. He's he's ready to go. So um, that's what we want. We're we're trying to let Joe off the leash, but it's hard when there's no one else wanting to. No, no dance partners out there. You know, you know, guys like uh, Chisora shook his hand on your on on your on camera. If the money's right. We'll fight. Well, we've offered him significantly more money than he got for his European title fight against a 14 0 guy. We offered him way more money than that, and he still said no. So it's like, nah, this is what it is, you know. So just to go back, obviously, to uh, February the 3rd, the Akoli Chamberlain show, where it looked like there could have been some progress there with the Chisora. Zero, fight. zero So progress, nothing's nothing, happened positively. Nothing, 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 and what nothing. reason have you been given back from Chisora why the fight wanted to do the fight? He's not interested in that fight. Not sure what his other options are, but he's fighting for 20 grand on Dylan White's undercard. So that's his other option. He could have been fighting tonight. We offered him the fight for tonight. Could, or, or on Saturday night, he could have fought. But he didn't want to. I understand he's at the end of his career and if he loses against Joe, there's nowhere to go. But people said that before his European title fight. If he couldn't win the European title fight against that, that 14 no guy, where's he got to go to? But he lost that. And where is he going to? He's fighting for 20 grand for, against, I don't know, who's, who's Joey's fighting on the Dylan White undercard? Well, I don't think the opponent's been announced Exactly, yet. exactly, exactly. So that's what he's, I don't know, it's up to you. He's his own man, you make your own decisions, but you know, when you shake someone's hand, So, you know. I'm not asking you for a specific figure, but did you go above the touted 80 grand that was Yeah, way more, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, way more. Okay. Six figures, healthy six figure numbers. And this guy's not, you know, the guy's not, but it is what it is, you know. I said it was more than what he got for his European title fight. Obviously, Joe's got his fight up against Donny Palmer on Saturday. If he comes through that, is there still a possibility that still fight could if he happen wants it, on he wants it, your we're looking, at other, we're looking at yeah. other guys at the moment, but if he says, if, if Chisora says after he, after he wins his fight on, on, on um, Dylan White's undercard, if he, if he says then, yeah, I, I feel good now, I'm in good form, I'm ready to fight, and it'll be six weeks at that point, I'll be ready to fight Joe Joyce, I'm sure we will be able to make it happen. Joe was meant to be fighting uh, on the original undercard for 
your fight with Tony Bellew back in December. Tom Little, are you going to revisit that or not? No, Tom Little got beat, didn't he? Um, it would have been a good, it would have been a good if he wouldn't have, if he'd have won that fight. If he'd have beat Hergovic, yeah, that'd have been a great fight. But the fact that he lost to Hergovic um, quite conclusively at the moment, you know, maybe as. I don't know, but it's not a, not a name on Joe's radar. He's 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 after the bigger pot, the bigger names. Yeah. Even like the Lenroy Thomases of the world, right, okay. guys like that. We will be talking to Lenroy Thomases people. So hopefully, we're okay. trying to we're trying to get him out there. But it's like fingers crossed. If that one can be made, that would probably be better than a Chisora fight. To be honest, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's just run through, uh, obviously, the other fights on the card. Matty Askin defending his British style against Stephen Simmons. Yeah. Uh, this fight was previously meant to happen. Yeah, yeah. It didn't. didn't happen through injury, but you know, it's a good fight. Both both fighters are really up for it. You know, what I wanted to do is have a card where there was a bit of spice between the, all of the fighters. You, know, you had that today. To yeah, we had that today, and that's what that's what you want. You know, and and for me, what makes me happy is is to know that it's free to air. You know, I'm not telling anyone to pay pay per view or to subscribe to not this yet, or that. Anyway. But yeah, but <laughs> I'm saying this is free. You know, we're putting yeah. on like it's a good healthy bill. People will tune in to watch this. Yeah. And that's what we want. That's what I, that's how I got into boxing is by watching Nigel Ben when I was a little kid or Frank Bruno. This is how, this is just how I got into boxing, you know, and hopefully young kids now, you know, who may, who may not have satellite television can tune in and watch it and you can, you can build the fan base. And obviously having Roxana fighting as well, you know, it brings a different demographic yeah, right, a, di yeah. a different a, dim a different demographic also. You know, she's inspiring lots of young ladies. She does like motivational speaking to, to women and I really feel that she's sort of opened up a different door to potential boxing fans. Mm. And she's such a lovely human being, such a, such a struggle she's had in her life to get to where she is today. You know, it was really a, a great signing for me um, to want to get someone with, with such a sort of rich story. You know, because if, if she can achieve, you know, a fraction of what she's achieved in boxing, in the kickboxing world, you know, she'd be, uh, she'd be a... A huge it's crazy to listen to her talk crazy but when you hear her say that she kept her training yeah. secret from yeah. her family for yeah. five years because yeah. she didn't want to be given the ultimatum yeah. to choose between the that two that show, shows how yeah. much she, she she loves to fight whether it's martial arts whether it's boxing whether it's kickboxing Muay Thai she, she's a natural born for you never think so speaking to her in a million years but trust me when she puts the gloves on when she's in that ring she's a, she's a pocket rocket and I've been watching her every day training and she's really really improving and she's inspiring great she's, been, she's in fantastic shape and you will see you'll see something special I really I really believe that you know she, I said she's just starting but she had no, no amateur fights you know but she they threw, they threw in the deep end in, in Muay Thai and she became world champion. You know, I believe she can do something similar. You know, for me, a dream fight one day would be sort of Nicola Adams and uh, Roxanne. And for me, that would be like a dream. But obviously, not right now. You've got an Olympic, you know, two-time gold medalist, you know, versus someone who's having their first average fight. But you know, women's boxing, you never know. You never know how quick she can progress. But this is, this is potentially huge fights out there. And Wadi Camacho in a rematch yeah. against Danny Cousins. Yeah. No, another bit of spice. No, no bit love lost there yeah, either. I've known um, Wadi for, for a while. He's fought on my undercard before. Um, he's, I've sparred with him before. So, you know, I've got, got, got a friendship with the guy. And he, want, he, he, he wants to put on a performance. You know, he knows Channel 5. He knows a lot of people will be watching this. This, this is a good opportunity for him to show the world that, you know, he's not a, a southern area fighter. You know, he doesn't like to be labelled as a southern area champion because that means that he's, you know, he's not the British champion. He wants to be the best in Britain. And after this fight, he'll be gunning for either Luke or um, the winner of this fight, Askin Simmons. So either the Commonwealth title or the British title is the fights that he wants after this. And rightly so, you know, he's, been, he's, played, he's done his apprenticeship in the game. And um, you know, if, if he can get the win over Cousins, then he'll be looking at big, big fights. Live on Channel 5 yeah. this Saturday. This Saturday night. So just at 10.30, yeah. Which is a little bit late. Yeah, a little bit late. I don't, I don't pick the time. I just get, I just get but the what, slot. Obviously, the undercard happens yeah, before that. So, yeah. what goes live at ten thirty? Live at Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce is live. Okay, so the rest of the card is on uh, Sport Bible or Lad Bible. Sport Bible. Sport Bible. So okay. at seven thirty, so tune in at seven thirty um, for sort of the best of the rest. And that goes live on a live stream of that, and then it all crosses over. And tune in Channel Five is the main, the main key. Ten thirty, you'll see all the. Uh, all of the action. It'd be a good, good show. I'm excited, and um, yeah, it's a good, good Saturday night. Yeah, get down to your call as well if you want to see it live. You've some good fights on. Tune in. David, what did you make of um, Deontay Wilder's performance against uh, Luis Ortiz? Were you impressed 
with one. Yeah, yeah. Any any victory against someone who's undefeated is impressive. You now anybody who can knock out someone who's never been knocked out before is a, is, a, is a good performance. I thought Wilder would have done it a lot easier. Um, I, I think there may have been some type of issues behind the scenes with the fact that he lost a lot of weight. Now I've had I've had a situation before where I was ill right before a fight and I lost like eight pounds. You know, in like four days prior to the fight and I assume maybe something similar happened to him that's why the fight was you know why he had that little awkward spell in one of the rounds where you know he didn't get knocked down but he was all over the shot so but I think if he was 100% and his weight was what it should have been he probably got the, the fight done uh, a lot easier but it was entertaining for me watching it I'm like oh I, was like, oh, I couldn't believe it. I was like I was screaming at the television but I was so happy when he managed to regroup and get out and, and, and chin um, Ortiz because nobody wanted that guy winning that fight. That would have been so bad for, but it would have been actually the worst thing ever for boxing if that cheat would have then um, been able to beat you know an undefeated fighter like Wilder. That would have been horrible because then you would have had uh, Ortiz looking at fighting Joshua and it would ah, have been horrible. You know, I'm so glad the right guy won for, for every reason. Despite Joshua having a huge fight with Joseph Parker, who seems to be a little bit, not by Joshua, but by the public, a little bit overlooked because everyone's talking about potential fights with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury and whoever else. But can you see the possibility of Wilder and Joshua happening this year? No, not this year. No. Not this year. My gut instinct says no. no, no. Maybe, what, maybe next year. For the reason... reason one guy's good. One guy will have three. But if it's Joshua, well, maybe maybe if Parker wins, if Parker if Parker beats Joshua, then Parker's gonna have a rematch. So no, it ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen this year. There are bit. There are bigger fights out there for Joshua, more financially lucrative fights that he may feel are easier than Deontay Wilder. I know this time round, you are kind of refusing to kind of talk about anyone else apart from what you have in front of you on May 5th. Belly, May 5th, yeah. But, that, but that's it. But usually you get 100 questions thrown at you about, well, if you beat him, yeah, would you fight him? Yeah, yeah. Would you fight him? Could you fight him? But if you beat Tony Bellew, you're, I talk, I, I you're fully back on the scene, though. Potentially. Depends. No, 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 not, not necessarily. Right. If I, take, if I beat Tony Bellew, if I get knocked down two times, got a big cut, dislocate my arm, sprain my ankle, nah, I'm not. I'm like, so is it how your, is how the, your body reacts after the fight how, as well? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. How, how, I, how I look after this fight is solely dependent on where I box again. It's not the result of the fight. Right. A loss, 100% no, I won't box again. A win, depending on how I win the fight. If I win the fight and it's a struggle and I'm, I'm to dig deep, and then it's like, no. If you can't beat Tony Bailey real clean, then you know, thinking about any of these big names is just crazy. Roughly two months out to the fight. How are you feeling today? I feel good. I feel really good. I feel healthy. Um, I feel probably a lot, a hell of a lot better than I felt two months prior to our first fight. Like way better. Um, feel healthier. Yeah, just feel better all round. Everything feels better. So things seem to be coming together. You know, I've got Ruben Tabares back on the team now, um, working closely with Ishmael Salas. So I think that's a nice combination. You know, Ruben's worked with me. For my all my heavyweight title fights, um, when I beat Nikolai Valio, so he knows how to get the best the best out of me. And uh, I've been working every day till God knows what time at night. And uh, yeah, I feel nice. I feel good. I think people are gonna be pleasantly surprised when they see the the, the version of the haymaker that turns Which up. Which point time. Oh, is this? Yeah, I know about 18.6. I think it is. Yeah. But David, in the lead up to this fight, um, in the lead up to this fight compared to the last one, you've been less kind of. Not vocal, but... I, 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 in the lead up to this fight, I don't have to sell the fight. First time around, I really had to sell the fight because as soon as the fight was announced, it was like, ah, fighting Tony Bradley, oh, it'll be interesting, but you're going to knock him out in one round, so yeah, we might not pay for this one on pay-per-view, we'll pay for the next one. You know, when you're fighting someone who's going to fight battle, such a huge favourite for the first one, it wasn't considered a competitive match. It was, competitive, competitive, it was considered a fight where two guys didn't like each other. That's what he was watching the grudge, not watching it for a, a Gatti Ward type of experience. You're watching it for just something might crazy might happen. This time round, people know it was a great fight first time. And they're hoping it's going to get the same thing again. So we don't have to sell it. 
I don't have to slap him or he doesn't have to say this or that. The fight, the first fight sells the second fight. So I can relax, I can train, I can wish him well. Train well, Tony Bellew. Remember, I, I love you. Last question, just quickly. I believe Tony Bellew's come out and said today that there is a possibility of him fighting Andre Wall after you. What do, what do you think of that? If he can beat me, he can fight anybody. If he can fight, if he can beat me, then yeah, fighting Wall would be a great fight for him. He said he doesn't want to fight Joshua or Wilder. He's who, honest about that. He's, he's honest about them. Yeah. So if he feels he can go down and do that, then great. If he feels if he can beat me in the form that I'm in, then he's got a great shot against Ward. No doubt about it. So he's right. If he can beat me, then looking at someone like Ward, getting them out of retirement, it'll be a big fight. And it's a fight against a guy who's not that big. So he'll be a lot less, it may feel to him as though he's a lot less dangerous than me. David Hay, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV. And like I said, Channel 5, 10, 30 p.m. Tune in. Tune in. Or if you come in there, get there from about five o'clock. Yeah, you've got a lot of fire sauce. Yeah. No problem. Thank you very much for your time Pleasure, today. Pleasure, mate. All four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.